Hey dudes, it's Mr. Post, and on today's lesson, the objectives are for you to understand the concept of impulse. So I want you to be able to understand the concept of impulse using only words, and that means I'm not going to be using numbers in the first part. And really, I want you to be able to explain what impulse is after the very first part of the lesson. We're then coming back in part two, which is the second half of this lesson, and I want you to be able to solve calculations to show that you can determine the impulse that an object experiences. Now we're going to support the first part of the concepts with now numbers and calculations and it all ties together beautifully. So please, you definitely want to stick around for the second half of the lesson because it should make the first half make even more sense. Let's get into it. Now specifically, an impulse is something that an object experiences. And an object can experience a force that acts on it over a course of time. Now, when an object experiences this force, kind of think of it like as this. You're running you know, through a room, and someone grabs you by the shirt and pulls you backwards. You have experienced a force acting over the course of a time. And what that did is it resulted in something. It resulted in a change in your velocity. Now, likewise, you could also be moving down a hallway and someone shoves you from behind. In the same way, you have just experienced a force from behind acting over a certain period of time. And that time period is how long the person's hand that they're shoving you with was in contact with your body. Now, what I want you to see here is this, that when you experience an impulse, you also experience a change in momentum. Now, I use the word force up here, but specifically, I should clarify that. That is an unbalanced force. Okay, so specifically, when the force is unbalanced, you're experiencing this thing known as an impulse, which is nothing more than a force that acts over time. And when that force acts over a course of time, there is a result. And the result is a change in your momentum. Remember that momentum is mass times velocity. But in this case, I'm also doing something different. I'm saying it's mass times a change in velocity. Now, when I use this little triangle here, that means a change. Because you've changed velocity, we're looking now at a change in your momentum. So I'm hoping you get this little preview here that an impulse is related to momentum changes. So check out the formula for impulse. An impulse is going to equal a change in momentum. And that's what I want you to see over here. This is the change in momentum. Mass times change in velocity is going to equal, equal a change in momentum. This over here, a force multiplied by time, that's my impulse. So an object is going to experience a force through a course of time that changes the velocity of the object. Well, the cool thing here, guys, is that we look at force and time. They're not new units for us. They're old units, and we're simply just rearranging them in a different way now. The unit for impulse is going to be the Newton second. That's correct. Force is expressed as a Newton. Time is expressed as a second. And it's not force divided by a second because they're multiplied together. It's force multiplied by second. And that's going to equal a mass, which is kilogram, times a change of velocity, which is meters per second. Now, impulse is a force that acts over a course of time. Now, I want you to understand that when the unbalanced force is in the direction of motion, if the unbalanced force is in the direction of motion, this is an example of you walking down the hallway and someone pushes you from behind and they're pushing you in the same direction that you're going, we're going to see a change in momentum that is an increase in your momentum because your velocity is going to increase. But when that unbalanced force comes in the opposite direction, such as you're walking down the hallway and someone grabs your shirt from behind and pulls you backwards, the force is applied in the opposite direction that you're going. We're looking at a decrease in your momentum because you have a change of velocity 
and your velocity is going down. 